anybody see my glasses? Yeah, here you are, son. So do you really need them that strong? Dad, until I put them on, I thought you were Mom. <laughs> Papa, would you tell Mom I'll be back in a couple of hours? Howdy, you're not going out like that. Why? What's wrong with it? <laughs> Halloween is months away. <laughs> but you and your silly okay, jokes... Okay, okay, knock off the guerrilla warfare. Now, why the Sub-Zero outfit? Because Richard likes to keep the top down on the car. Likes to? He has to keep the top down on that car. Why? It hasn't got any. <laughs> It's such a joy living with a funny family. I gotta go, Richard. will be right here. See you later. All right, have a good time, but be home early, because I worry when you're out driving. Oh, Papa, you don't have to worry. Richard's never had an accident in all the years he's been driving. See you later. How many years has he been driving? Six months. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Hey, did you see that car ram me? Yeah, I sure did. Good, then you're a witness. Okay. Uh, my name is Patty Lane, and I live right here. Uh, thank you, son. Well, that guy had no right to... Son! <laughs> oh, excuse me. In that outfit, you look like a boy. Well, I'm not a boy, and you can ask anybody. You can... <laughs> Sorry about bumping into your car. Richard, what were you doing in that car? It's my father's car. Mine broke down. I'm uh, sure we can work something out. I'm sure we can, young fella, because I got a witness here who saw the whole thing, and she says you were absolutely at fault. Yeah, this girl right here. Don't look at me. I look like a boy in this outfit. <laughs> what was your name again? Matilda. Matilda Fenstermont. I thought you said your name was Patty Lane and you live here. Oh, no, you're confused. Uh, Patty Lane is where I live. <laughs> now, stop fooling around. You saw this accident. You're a witness whether you like it or not. Or do you want me to call a cop? Oh. Well, now, is that Patty or Patsy? A little of both. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a menu pet. The ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our patty loves her rock and roll. The hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins. And you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. Talk to you a minute. Yeah, sure. What's on your mind? You sure I'm not interrupting something important? No, no. This is just an editorial on Red China. Oh. <laughs> What's your problem? Well, I need some advice, but I, I don't want to disturb anything. Now, if, if you're really busy, you can just say, Patty, get lost. I'm busy. Patty, if you were disturbing anything, I would say to you, Patty, get lost. I'm busy. So quit beating around the bush and get to it. Okay. Now, it's very complicated, so listen carefully. Uh-huh. Thank you. Now, A and B are friends. A sees an auto accident involving B and C. Before A knows that B is involved in the accident, C nails A as a witness against B whose fault it was. You understand? Yeah. Uh, but would you mind repeating the question? <laughs> I haven't asked it yet. Oh. The question is this. Should A testify against B, even though A and B are great friends and A and Z don't even know each other? Especially when B is going to get in terrible trouble with his father. You follow me? Oh, I follow you. I just don't understand you. Well, what's so difficult to understand? It's as simple as A, B, C. Patty, would you mind if we began this meeting all over again, from the very beginning? From the very beginning? Mm-hmm. Okay, Papa. Uh, Papo, can I talk to you a minute? Get lost, Patty. I'm busy. <laughs> Richard, 
point. Are you ready for this? What? On television the other night, there was this fugitive, see? He was in a big jam, so he decided to go to the people who were causing him the trouble and throw himself on their mercy. Hey, Patty, that's a great idea. You mean, go to the owner of the other car and ask him to forget about it. Right. Sure, and if I throw myself on his mercy, maybe he won't even put in a claim. I mean, I'm a kid, and I'm honest. Hey. Maybe he'll say, forget it. Uh, what do you think, Kathy? Forget it. <laughs> oh, come on, it's worth a try, isn't it? I suppose so. Okay, Rich, you go call Mr. Tompkins and tell him we'll be right over. Patty, what did happen when the fugitive went to the people who were causing him the trouble? Uh, they turned him into the police, and near the end of the show, he was on his way to the electric chair. <laughs> See, Mrs. Tompkins, all I'm trying to say is that if you'll forget about everything, Richard will be happy to pay... My dear young lady, why don't you let Mr. Harrison tell me about the horrible accident himself? Horrible accident? It wasn't anything of the kind. It's just the same. Why don't you let Mr. Harrison tell me about it himself? Hmm? Okay. Uh, you don't have to be so formal. You don't have to call him Mr. Harrison. He's just a kid. Speak up, kid. <laughs> That's right, ma'am. It was just a simple little bump. Neither of us were going more than uh, five miles an hour. If that. Those cars never got any closer than two kids doing the Watusi. <laughs> Naturally, you want to protect the man you love. Look, all we want to do is pay you whatever it comes to for the small damage done to your car. Uh, that's right, ma'am. I'm going to give up something I can do without and give you a dollar a week out of my allowance. Oh, but you two children misunderstand me. We don't want a cent for the car. You don't? Oh, absolutely not. Burden you and this nice young man while well, we wouldn't even think of it. Oh, oh Mrs. Tompkins, that's fantastic. I don't know how to thank you, Mrs. Tompkins. <laughs> Who cares about damages to a car? <laughs> Isn't that great, man? Yeah, it sure is, Mrs. Tompkins. It's the doctor bills that are really important. The doctor bills? Doctor bills for a car? The doctor bills for my husband, the victim of, shall we say, teenage recklessness? No, let's not. <laughs> Mrs. Tompkins, are you trying to tell me that your husband was badly hurt? The doctors still don't know how serious his internal injuries are. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. What was that? It's Mr. Tompkins on his bed of pain. Could we see him? If you promise to be very quiet. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh. You can see how bad he looks. That's nothing compared to the way I'm going to look when my father hears about this. <laughs> I think he wants to tell me something. <laughs> Is there one M or two in Testament? You mean as an Old and New Testament? I mean, as in last will and testament. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm afraid you're going to have to go. He's too weak to go on. Me too. <laughs> I'm truly sorry for you, young man, being involved in a mess like this. Huh? And I'm sure your father will be happy to pay us whatever we ask. Uh, just to keep you from having this terrible blot on your record. Say, um... Ten thousand dollars? Ten thousand dollars? Our lawyer, Mr. Lewis, will be in touch with you. Thank you, Mrs. Tompkins. We knew you'd be fair. <laughs> me is this was the first accident I've had in all the years I've been... <clears throat> all the months I've been driving. He really doesn't have any reason to be so agitated. Then tell him, Papa. I mean, the other man is just going to make a claim, and his father will hand the claim over to the insurance company, and they'll pay the claim, no matter how big it is. Yeah, and then they'll cancel his insurance. Ross, they wouldn't. Would they? 
Of course they wouldn't. Oh, well, they might raise his premium a little. Uh oh. But... Mr. Lane, do I have to tell my father? Unless he likes surprises. <laughs> That's murder. Richard, why don't you relax about it? It isn't that bad. You know, I remember during the war, something like this happened to me with an army jeep. Only I didn't have to contend with my father. I had to break the news to a supply sergeant, and that was murder. Well, a supply sergeant could ruin you for life. Actually, he's lucky he's only got to deal with his father. Doesn't that make you feel better? No, worse. Do you know what my father was in the army? A supply sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> so long. See you when you get back. From where? You mean you're gonna stay in town and take the rap? <laughs> oh, boy. Poor Richard. Ross, I'd like to talk to Mom and Papa. So talk. Ross. I've got just as much right here as you do. Ross. I'm going. <laughs> but I'd like to know how I'm gonna learn about life if you keep sending me out of the room. Ross. <laughs> what is it, dear? How can I testify against Richard? Oh, honey, stop being so worried about it, will you? Generally, these things are settled out of court. Yeah, but what if it isn't? Can they force me to testify against my own boyfriend? <sighs> Darling, why don't you do something to take your mind off the whole thing? Go for a walk or something. Can they? Honey, you haven't even had a phone call from the man's lawyer. Why don't you relax? I'll get it. Hello? No, this is Mrs. Lane. Yes, that's right, Patty. You're the lawyer for whom? <laughs> Wait a minute, he wants to talk to you about the accident. I can talk now. I'm going out to take my mind off the whole thing. <laughs> uh, any calls for me while I was out? Yes. A lawyer named Mr. Lewis called you. That's a surprise. He called about an hour ago, too. He said he wanted to come over and get a deposition from you. I know. I can't do this to Richard. I'll just have to keep stalling him till I find a way out of this mess. Please hurry up, Patty. I'm running out of excuses. What do you mean? Well, one time he called, I told him I was your mother. Another time he called, I told him I was your brother. What do I tell him next time? Oh, I don't know. Tell him nobody's home and you're just a burglar who's answering the telephone. <laughs> Around. Darling, you can't keep ducking it forever. You've got to call this Mr. Lewis back. Mr. Lewis? Don't play games with me. The man is beside himself trying to reach you. You know, he accused me of using an English accent on one of the calls. <laughs> he must be out of his tree. Oh, not only that. He told me he called yesterday and a burglar answered the phone. <laughs> I'll see you later, Mom. <laughs> Hello? Who? Patty Lane? Who's calling? The Watusi Dance Studio. You have two free dance lessons for her? She can just answer a simple question? I'll take it upstairs. Just a minute. Yes, you wanted to talk to me? Uh, Miss Lane? This is Mr. Lewis. I'm sorry I had to resort to such an obvious subterfuge, but you gave me no choice. They're all. We're scoring, please. What happened to Miss Lane? Hello! Miss Lane? You want to speak to Miss Lane? Who is this? Never mind who is calling. Who is this? This, uh, Leon, Japanese houseboy. <laughs> who is this? This is Mr. Lewis. Lewis! <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Lewis. Uh, you from out of luck. Miss, Miss Lane is unavailable. Are you sure? I'm positive I had her on the phone. Mr. Lewis, please, control yourself. No need to make a big McGill up. And this is not Pearl Harbor, you know. Now, you listen to me, Rayon. And you listen good. You tell Miss Patty Lane that she had better return my call immediately. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Unconditional surrender. <laughs> Patty, you're fighting a losing battle. 
You saw the accident and you'll have to tell the truth. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. The question is, did I really see it? What? Now that I think about it, I'm not too sure. What do you mean? Kathy, all I can remember is I came out of the house and I heard the crash and then I looked over and... That's it, Kathy. I didn't see the accident. I just heard it. Are you quite sure? Well, doesn't light travel faster than sound? Yes, but... There you are. Aren't you just rationalizing? Yeah, but doesn't it sound good? <laughs> Any jury would see through such a flimsy pretext. Hey, Eagle Eyes. Can't you see I'm busy? Will you take a look at this coin and see if you can't make it out? Is it a 1915 D or S? Where's your magnifying glass? Why don't you use that? I can't find it. You're always bothering me. It's a 1915 D, as in dumbbell. Thanks, sis. Never mind. Sometimes he's... That's it, Kathy. That's it. That's what, Patty? That's how I can get out of testifying against Richard. You see how... Patty, I'd really rather you didn't let me in on it. You see, you may need me later on as a character witness. <laughs> Uh, I'm not Henny. Uh, I'm Mr. Lewis, Mr. Tompkins' attorney. Oh, yes, of course. For a minute, you look just like my Aunt Henrietta. Won't you come over? <laughs> I should have known it was you because you told me you were coming over. Oh, may I take your hat? Yeah. Uh, Thank thanks. you. I always admire a man who wears a derby. <laughs> Can I take your suitcase, too? No, thanks. Oh, all right. Well, won't you come in? Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> no? Just make yourself at home. I know you want to talk about your client's accident, and I want you to know I'm willing to tell you everything I saw. <laughs> uh, tell me, have you always worn glasses? Oh, no, of course not. As a matter of fact, do you see this picture? Now, up until then, I never wore glasses. Oh. <laughs> well, I took the liberty of preparing a statement which I'd like you to look over and read and correct, if necessary. Yes, thank you. Can you see that all right? Oh, yes, of course. Can you read it? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're right. That's much better. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, would you like some candy? <laughs> no, thanks. I don't smoke. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I get you a cold drink? Please. Don't go away. I'm not thirsty anymore. Oh. oh, Miss Lane. Yes? While you were in the other room, I took the liberty of turning on your TV. Oh, good. Good. You like that show? Oh, yes, yes, I love it. But I'm afraid you don't have it tuned in right. Oh? Now, I'll adjust it for you. Oh, thanks. You see, it's a, a color set, and you have to learn how to work it. But once you get used to it... <laughs> Miss Lane, yes. I came here to assist. Patty, do me a favor. Ross, don't you see that I have a guest? But it's vitally important. 
Please excuse me. Little brothers, you know. <laughs> Ross, what is it you want? I just traded for this 1926 penny. Is that a D or an S? That's vitally important. It's a 1926 S. Now, will you please leave me alone? I'm very busy. I... Very funny. Oh, Mr. Lewis, there's something you don't understand. Coins, excuse me, are the only things I can see. Now, Miss Lane, I have to warn you. When I get you into court, friendly or unfriendly, you had better tell the truth or, sir, help me, I'll have you tried for perjury. Just don't see what good it's gonna do us. They already tried talking to him once. What's the point of trying again? Look, Rich, you know as well as I do that most cases never even get to court. People sue for $100,000, and then you hear they settle out of court for $56.27. Look, I figure if we go to the Tompkins and catch him off guard and offer him cash, they may just accept it. Yeah, but Mr. Tompkins is in such bad shape. Well, money's one of the greatest wonder drugs in the world. He might just get instantly well. Maybe you're right. How much do we have in cash? $56.27. Who is it? It's Mr. Tompkins. But it can't be. I told you you were wrong. I know it was Mr. Tompkins. Do you mind if we pick up the blanket? Oh. What, and expose him to a draft in his weakened condition? Oh. oh. Do you hear that? Yeah, he's groaning better. Uh, let's settle out of court. Oh. I'd groan too if I had just run in the house that fast. Are you calling me a liar? I'm not calling anybody a liar, Mrs. Tompkins. All I'm trying to do is get at the truth. Pay him their $56.27. No. May I ask you a question? Certainly. If he's not dressed, why is he wearing a shoe? <laughs> That's a special shoe prescribed by our doctor to relieve the pain. Uh, pay him the $56. Okay, uh. Mrs. Tompkins, I guess we were wrong. I apologize. young man. I sure hope not. I beg your pardon. Uh, it was nice seeing you again, Mrs. Tompkins. Goodbye! Oh! oh here, Patty. Oh, oh, shake it my off. My back. It's, oh. it's probably nothing. No, Richard, don't judge me until we find out if anything is broken. But I just don't understand how this could have happened. Oh, Richard, before I faint, get the names of all the witnesses. Faint? Witness? Oh, well, you just barely stumbled on our step. Richard, you heard her. You're my witness. Mrs. Tompkins just admitted I fell on her step. Now she's my witness against Mr. Tompkins. What? I know just how you feel, Mrs. Tompkins, testifying against your own husband. Now, just a minute. Aren't you going a little too fast? Woman to woman. Mrs. Tompkins, I know how you want to protect your husband from paying for the terrible pulverizing damage. Oh. <laughs> I'll never dance again. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We aren't going to pay you a cent. Pay me, Mrs. Tompkins? No, I'm afraid you misunderstand. I don't want anything from you. Well, that's different. But my folks are going to be awfully angry at you for ruining a potential ballet dancer. <laughs> Unless, um... Unless what? Let's look at it this way, Mrs. Tompkins. You will win your case against Richard for $10,000, and my folks will win their case against you for $10,000, and then we'll be even. So why should you be the middleman? Why don't we just call it quits now? Hmm? Yeah. All right, Miss Lane. You made your point. Hey, Patty, how about that? I think you conned them in to get me off the hook. How about that? Oh! Okay, oh. Patty. You can stop putting it on. She went in. I'm not putting it on. I think I broke my ankle. Oh. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. The Patty's only seen the sights of broken teeth on the heights. What a crazy pair. Go like it.
Patty Lane and you live here. Oh, no, you're confused. Uh, Patty Lane is where I live. <laughs> now, stop fooling around. You saw this accident. You're a witness whether you like it or not. Or do you want me to call a cop? Oh. Now, is that Patty or Patsy? A little of both. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But them cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a menu at the ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our patty loves her rock and roll, the hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet. Still the cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins. Talk to you a minute. Yeah, sure. What's on your mind? You sure I'm not interrupting something important? No, no. This is just an editorial on Red China. Oh. <laughs> What's your problem? Well, I need some advice, but I, I don't want to disturb anything. Now, if, if you're really busy, you can just say, Patty, get lost. I'm busy. Patty, if you were disturbing anything, I would say to you, Patty, get lost. I'm busy. So quit beating around the bush and get to it. Okay. Now, it's very complicated, so listen carefully. Uh-huh. Thank you. Oh. Uh -huh. You can see how bad he looks. That's nothing compared to the way I'm gonna look when my father hears about this. Uh -huh. I think he wants to tell me something. Is there one M or two in testament? You mean as in Old and New Testament? I mean as in last will and testament. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm afraid you're going to have to go. He's too weak to go on. Me too. <laughs> I'm truly sorry for you, young man, being involved in a mess like this. And I'm sure your father will be happy to pay us whatever we ask. Uh, just to keep you from having this terrible blot on your record. Say, um, $10,000? $10,000? $10, Our lawyer, Mr. Lewis, will be in touch with you. Thank you, Mrs. Tompkins. We knew you'd be fair. <laughs> me is this was the first accident I've had in all the years I've been... <clears throat> all the months I've been driving. <laughs> he really doesn't have any reason to be so agitated. Then tell him, Papa. I mean, the other man is just going to make a claim and his father will hand the claim over to the insurance company and they'll pay the claim, no matter how big it is. Yeah, and then they'll cancel his insurance. Ross, <laughs> they wouldn't. Would they? Of course they wouldn't. No, they... <laughs> Anybody see my glasses? Yeah, here you are, son. Say, so, do you really need them that strong? Dad, until I put them on, I thought you were Mom. <laughs> Papa, would you tell Mom I'll be back in a couple of hours? Howdy, you're not going out like that. Why, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Halloween is months away. <laughs> Think you and your silly okay, jokes... Okay, okay, knock off the guerrilla warfare. Now, why the Sub-Zero outfit? Because Richard likes to keep the top down on the car. Likes to? He has to keep the top down on that car. Why? It hasn't got any. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a joy living with a funny family. I gotta go, Richard will be right here. See you later. All right, have a good time, but be home early because I worry when you're out driving. Oh, Papa, you don't have to worry. Richard's never had an accident in all the years he's been driving. See you later. 
How many years has he been driving? Six months. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Hey, did you see that car ram me? Yeah, I sure did. Good, then you're a witness. Okay. Uh, my name is Patty Lane, and I live right here. Uh, thank you, son. Well, like I had no right to... Son? <laughs> oh, excuse me. In that outfit, you look like a boy. Well, I'm not a boy, and you can ask anybody. You can... <laughs> Sorry about bumping into your car. Richard, what were you doing in that car? It's my father's car. Mine broke down. I'm uh, sure we can work something out. I'm sure we can, young fella, because I got a witness here who saw the whole thing, and she says you were absolutely at fault. Yeah, this girl right here. Don't look at me. I look like a boy in this outfit. <laughs> what was your name again? Matilda. Matilda Fenstermark. I thought you said your name was Pat. Now, A and B are friends. A sees an auto accident involving B and C. Before A knows that B is involved in the accident, C nails A as a witness against B, whose fault it was. You understand? Yeah. Uh, but would you mind repeating the question? <laughs> I haven't asked it yet. Oh. The question is this. Should A testify against B, even though A and B are great friends and A and Z don't even know each other? Especially when B is going to get in terrible trouble with his father. You follow me? Oh, I follow you. I just don't understand you. Well, what's so difficult to understand? It's as simple as ABC. Patty, would you mind if we began this meeting all over again, from the very beginning? From the very beginning? Mm-hmm. Okay, Papa. Ah, uh, Papa? Can I talk to you a minute? Get lost, Patty. I'm busy. <laughs> Richard, what? are you ready for this? What? On television the other night, there was this fugitive, see? He was in a big jam, so he decided to go to the people who were causing him the trouble and throw himself on their mercy. Hey, Patty, that's a great idea. You mean, go to the owner of the other car and ask him to forget about it. Right. Sure, and if I throw myself on his mercy, maybe he won't even put in a claim. I mean, I'm a kid, and I'm honest. Maybe he'll say, forget it. Uh, what do you think, Kathy? Forget it. <laughs> oh, come on, it's worth a try, isn't it? I suppose so. Okay, Rich, you go call Mr. Tompkins and tell him we'll be right over. Patty, what did happen when the fugitive went to the people who were causing him the trouble? Uh, they turned him into the police, and near the end of the show, he was on his way to the electric chair. <laughs> See, Mrs. Tompkins, all I'm trying to say is that if you'll forget about everything, Richard will be happy to pay... My dear young lady, why don't you let Mr. Harrison tell me about the horrible accident himself? Horrible accident? It wasn't anything of the kind. But just the same, why don't you let Mr. Harrison tell me about it himself? Hmm? Okay. Uh, you don't have to be so formal. You don't have to call him Mr. Harrison. He's just a kid. Speak up, kid. <laughs> That's right, ma'am. It was just a simple little bump. Neither of us were going more than uh, five miles an hour. If that. Those cars never got any closer than two kids doing the Watusi. <laughs> Naturally, you want to protect the man you love. Look, all we want to do is pay you whatever it comes to for the small damage done to your car. Uh, that's right, ma'am. I'm going to give up something I can do without and give you a dollar a week out of my allowance. Oh, but you two children misunderstand me. We don't want a cent for the car. You don't? Oh, absolutely not. Burden you and this nice young man while well, we wouldn't even think of it. Oh, oh Mrs. Tompkins, that's fantastic. I don't know how to thank you, Mrs. Tompkins. <laughs> cares about damages to a car. <laughs> Isn't that great, honey? Yeah, sure is, Mrs. Tompkins. It's the doctor bills that are really important. <laughs> the doctor bills? Doctor bills for a car? <laughs> the doctor bills for my husband, the victim of, shall we say, teenage recklessness? No, let's not. <laughs> Mrs. Tompkins, are you trying to tell me that your husband was badly hurt? The doctors still don't know how serious his internal injuries are. Oh, boy. Oh, Oh! What was that? It's Mr. Tompkins on his bed of pain. Could we see him? If you promise to be very quiet. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
boy.